When thinking about the conflict between the U.S. government and the Lakota people in the latter 19th century, most people know of Sitting Bull and Crazy Horse. Today's video will focus on a lesser known, though equally important figure in that conflict, the Papa warrior Gaul. Gaul was a major force in the conflict and was feared and respected by the U.S. Army. Estimated to be only 5 foot 7, he was nonetheless an imposing physical presence, barrel chested, muscular, powerful, and donning a bright red blanket in battle that made him stand out. He was also a fierce warrior who knew the toll that intimidation played in war. At one point, he displayed three scalps he had taken on a hillside clearly visible to the soldiers at Fort Rice in what is now North Dakota. Unbeknownst to Gaul, one of those scalps had once been attached to a cousin of Julia Dent Grant, First Lady of the United States, and married to Ulysses Grant, President of the United States. Gaul and Sitting Bull were both raised within the same band of Hunk Papa. Separated by only nine years in age, Sitting Bull had become a mentor to the younger, fatherless Gaul. Both men eventually became members of the prestigious Strongheart Society, a respected and feared group of Hunk Papa warriors. Early in his life, Gaul was mostly involved in conflicts with traditional Lakota enemies, such as the Crow and the Pawnee. The opportunity to engage new enemies presented as whites invaded the traditional Lakota lands. During the U.S. Civil War, a separate war between the Lakota and the government of Minnesota spilled out onto the plains of the Dakota Territory. Gull's first known encounter with whites occurred during this war at the Battle of Kildare Mountain in 1864. A force of 4,000 U.S. soldiers routed a much smaller force of Lakota, forcing them to hastily abandon their village and flee. The soldiers burned everything left behind and killed an estimated 3,000 dogs that were left in the village. Two weeks later, Gaul and City Bull led an attack on a wagon train of 150 heading towards the Montana goldfields. This was the beginning of over a decade of conflict between Gaul and the U.S. government. Little is known about Gaul's participation in the 1866-1868 through 1868 fights known as Red Cloud's War. It is likely that he did not participate at all, as he was recovering from serious wounds inflicted by U.S. soldiers. Hoping to trade with the Arikara, Gaul made camp near Fort Berthold in what is now North Dakota. Unfortunately for Gaul, he was spotted setting up camp by Bloody Knife. Bloody Knife had a hunk papa father and an Arikara mother and grew up in the same camp as Gaul. The two never got along and were constantly at each other's throats. Upon seeing Gaul, Bloody Knife went to the fort and gathered soldiers. The group snuck up on Gaul's teepee at nighttime and the soldiers bayoneted Gaul multiple times. In later tellings of the story, Gaul would claim that Bloody Knife wanted to finish Gaul off with a gunshot to the head as Gaul lay bleeding, but the soldiers stopped him. The rivalry between Gaul and Bloody Knife would last from childhood through the Battle of Little Bighorn in 1876. Gaul was sent by Sitting Bull to Fort Rice to discuss the Treaty of Fort Laramie, which ended Red Cloud's War. The treaty granted the Black Hills, or Paha Sapa, to the Lakota and marked the Powder River country in what is now Wyoming and Montana as unceded territory, where the Lakota could continue to hunt bison. The treaty also called for the Lakota to assimilate to reservation life. The Hunk Papa were against this, and Gaul spoke eloquently against the treaty before dramatically throwing off his robe to reveal the multiple stab wounds inflicted by soldiers' bayonets. In spite of this display, Gaul was eventually enticed to sign the treaty with the promise of gifts. This angered many Hunk Papa elders and warriors, but Sitting Bull stood by Gaul, replying that they all knew Gaul would do anything for a square meal. By 1869, a staunch opposition to the treaty had emerged among the Lakota. This group was led by Sitting Bull with Gaul, Crow King, Rain in the Face, and Crazy Horse as his chief lieutenants. In 1872 and 1873, Gaul and Sitting Bull led multiple attacks on the Northern Pacific Railroad that often brought them into conflict with the U.S. Army. The attacks in 1872 caused the railroad to delay building through the Montana Territory for six years. This helped precipitate the financial collapse of the railroad, which was one of the driving factors behind the depression known as the Panic of 1873. In response to these attacks, General Sheridan sent 1,500 soldiers into the contested lands, including George Custer. On August 11, 1873, Sitting Bull's group made battle with Custer's soldiers at the Battle of the Yellowstone. Gaul made an impression on an embedded reporter from the New York Tribune as his horse was shot out from under him and he seamlessly mounted a different horse and rode away. Gaul was easily recognizable due to his imposing physical composition and the red blanket that he always wore in battle. After this battle, the soldiers referred to Gaul with a mixture of derision, fear, and awe as the fighting cock of the Sioux. The conflicts only grew in frequency and intensity as a Custer-led group discovered gold in the Black Hills. 
The Black Hills are the sacred land of the Lakota, and by 1874, only six years after they had been ceded to the Lakota forever, whites could not be kept out. In 1874 and 1875, many Lakota left the reservations and joined up with other bands already in the unceded Powder River Territory. This led to President Grant issuing an ultimatum that all Indians had to return to the reservations by January 31st, 1876. If they failed to do so, they would face the consequences. This had very little effect on the Lakota, and many more actually left the reservations as spring arrived. After refusing to comply with the ultimatum, the conflicts increased, leading to the Battle of the Little Bighorn on June 25, 1876. During that battle, the Hunk Papa were camped at the southern end of a sprawling Indian village. They were the first group attacked by the 7th Cavalry, when Major Marcus Reno led three companies into the village. Gaul participated in turning away Reno's companies, eventually routing them into a full-on retreat. That portion of the battle also saw his old rival Bloody Knife killed when a bullet smashed through his head as he and Reno were frantically discussing strategy. Gaul returned to the Hunk Pampa camp and found that two of his wives and three of his children had been killed during the attack. Reflecting later on that loss, Gaul said, It made my heart bad. After that, I killed all of my enemies with my hatchet. Gaul charged across the Little Bighorn River, and raced with Crazy Horse and Crow King to engage Miles Keough. Gaul led the effort to stampede the troops' horses, preventing them from being able to escape. After dispatching of Keough's troops, Gaul headed towards Custer Hill. In doing so, his group of Lakota ran headlong into soldiers under the command of George Yates, racing towards the river in a desperate attempt to escape. Gaul's troops destroyed all of Yates' command, and other Lakota said that Gaul chopped at least five men down by himself, fueled by a rage over the death of his family. He then rode a horse to Custer Hill and participated in the final act of the battle that saw Custer and about 40 of his men perish. In 1886, at a 10-year commemoration of the battle, Gaul impressed many when he gave the first Lakota version of the battle, walking around the battlefield and relaying the events of the day and his involvement to Edward Godfrey, who was a soldier with Reno. After the Little Bighorn, the large encampment broke up and Gaul and Sitting Bull continued to fight the U.S. Army at the battles of Ashley Creek and Redwater. The band of Hunk Papa was eventually chased into Canada by the dogged pursuit of Nelson Miles. At first, things went well in Canada as the bison were plentiful. As the bison numbers dwindled, so did the fortunes of Gaul and Sitting Bull's followers. Gaul would frequently lead raids across the border, searching for bison and antagonizing the U.S. government. With the bison almost gone, the Canadian government, which had been kind and respectful to the Lakota, offered reservation land to Canadian tribes. However, they did not extend this offer to Sitting Bull and the Hunk Papa. This led to Sitting Bull and Gaul meeting with U.S. government officials who tried to persuade the Lakota to return to the United States and live on reservations. Sitting Bull refused as he did not trust white people. Gaul secretly agreed to bring 20 lodges with him to surrender. When Sitting Bull found out tensions between him and Gaul that had been building as things had gotten worse for the Lakota exploded. Sitting Bull berated and degraded Gaul, embarrassing him and Gaul's temper erupted as he loudly exhorted the Hunk Papa to join him and leave Sitting Bull. Eventually, 300 lodges left with Gaul to surrender, and 200 stayed behind with Sitting Bull. Once Gaul reached the Standing Rock Reservation, he quickly adapted and became a loyal supporter of Indian agent James McLaughlin, a man adept at manipulating other people to get what he wanted. Gaul became a farmer, quickly learning the trade, and he taught farming to other Lakota. He served as a judge on the Court of Indian Offenses, and he eventually converted to Christianity, something that Sitting Bull never really seriously considered. When Sitting Bull arrived two years later, it was quickly evident that his deep-seated and well-earned mistrust of white people would make him difficult to deal with, and could also make him a leader of resistance again. McLaughlin immediately promoted Gaul to a leadership position in an effort to blunt Sitting Bull's influence. The frayed relationship between the two men was broken forever, when Gaul supported the Sioux Act of 1889, allowing the Great Sioux Reservation to be broken into six smaller ones and leftover land sold to whites. When the ghost dance phenomenon reached the reservation in 1890 and Sitting Bull got caught up in it, Gaul asked McLaughlin for guns to protect himself from Sitting Bull and his followers. Following Sitting Bull's death in 1890 at the hands of Indian police, Gaul lived in peace at the reservation until his death in 1894.